What's up everybody, on today's fireside chat, we're gonna continue the conversation that was in the comments on last week's video and dive further into the impact that social media has had on the camera industry and photography in general. Let's get it. Shout out to Film974, who commented on last week's video and shared his thoughts on how social media has helped keep the camera industry alive by keeping it relevant because we use cameras to share our photos on those platforms. And shout out to Alan2937 for bringing a different perspective on how social media has made everyone a photographer and diluted everyone's feeds on, and really people that are trying to make content on real cameras, their images are getting diluted in a bunch of cell phone images and social media really doesn't have that big of an impact on the camera industry. Those are both excellent perspectives. Thank you guys for the comments last week. I do read the comments, I do respond to them, and uh, you guys inspire me to talk about the new things, so I appreciate that. Listen here, buddy. Without social media, the camera industry would be freaking doomed. All right, all right, calm down. Social media isn't the savior people think it is. It brought a lot of wannabe cell phone photographers out of the woodwork. People that buy cameras don't use them just for social media. It's just one way they share their work. What? Look at the accounts like Peter McKinnon, Manny Ortiz, Roman Fox. What, what do they use? Nikons, Leicas, Canons, you know, real effing cameras, bro. Like, what are you talking about? What is he talking about? Yeah, but those guys are even larger on YouTube and Instagram only complements their work. It's not the main source of their work. They're YouTubers that also have an Instagram, not the other way around. Photographers hate the stupid square format of Instagram, to be honest with you, and me included. Ha, you said it yourself. You just said it. Social media complements their channel and it has a positive impact on their channel. Boom, mic drop. Whoa, dude, don't count the W yet. Yeah, it has a, has a positive impact once they've already have a following and they can promote it. But what I'm talking about is guys like you and me, the little guys. It's hard for us to get noticed at first. There's so many mediocre photos to go through from phone photographers that people can only have so much attention on their feeds before they're burned out and they're ready to turn it off. And that aren't focusing on pe people like us. And to add to that, social media platforms aren't promoting accounts like yours and mine. I mean, they're focusing on the, f the influencers and the ads, but how would journeyman photographers with actual cameras get their stuff noticed, huh? How's that gonna happen? They need social media. You have to admit that. You have to admit that they need social media. Well, there are apps like Vero that f focuses on photographers, and there are groups in Facebook where photographers can get together and share their work and there seems to be a more appreciative in that group. Vero said who? Mm -hmm. Nobody, that's who, come on, man. All right, good job. Get out of here with that nonsense. And all those Facebook groups, they're just a bunch of other enthusiasts talking to another enthusiast. You're not gonna get your stuff on the mainstream that way. That's some bull crap. You know you need that mainstream honest, audience, bro. You know you need it. Mm -hmm. So don't even come to me with that nonsense. Yeah, and that's part of the problem. It takes a lot for a photographer just starting out to get noticed on any of these platforms these days. And they're always geared towards the influencers, videos, reels, ad sales, not photos. It sucks. We need a platform like Instagram, used to be, where we could get our stuff out there and more visible. You have to agree with me. All right, old man, you came with all that. You guess you have a point. It would be nice if like YouTube, other apps would promote small guys like you and me and not just be catering towards the influence and the people they're gonna sell them ads. I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah, the answer actually lies in the middle somewhere. You're right and I'm right, we're both right. We need social media for the lack of a better platform, but it certainly dilutes photography now that everyone's a photographer these days. But cell phones have brought more people to the market. They have brought more people to photography. Are you kidding Think me? of cell phones like the disposable camera of the 80s and 90s before cell phone photography became a thing. People don't 
buy disposable cameras anymore. They use their phones. It's really like their disposable way of photography. At the end of the day, if you love photography, who cares how many people see it? Do it for you. Do it for the love of the art and the love of the images. Post your work for you. Enjoy photography for you. Share, don't share, just enjoy it. Like always, neither of us are right. Listen, somewhere kid. in the middle. I'm just be happy once. I gave you that. Just once. I would like for one of these videos to end and someone uh, wins. Why is it always got to be the answer? lies somewhere in the middle. <sighs> Whatever. What was up with those weirdos? That was a lot of fun, seriously. I really appreciate the comments, guys. Thank you so much for the support. And it really inspired me to make this video, so I appreciate that. After I wrote that little skit on my thoughts, after reading the comments, I watched a few other videos on the topic. One from my one of my favorite photographers, Peter McKinning. You guys probably all know him. He has over 5 million followers on YouTube. He's one of the biggest photographers there is. And he made a video some time ago about this very topic. But his, his thoughts were a little different. He really was saying more, do it for you. Do it for the love of photography. Do what makes you happy with photography. Don't focus so much on the social stresses of producing good or great content. You're gonna produce good content, you're gonna produce okay content, and you're gonna produce bangers. But don't always chase the banger like he used to, he even, even him himself. He posted a picture of a swimming pool the other day and it was a cool shot, but it was nothing like what he used to post. He used to post these epic, epic shots and only epic shots. And even he got burnt out from trying to do that over and over and over again. It just destroys the love of photography. And then more recently, Taylor Jackson expanded on that and gave his own thoughts on it. Now, Taylor Jackson is a wedding photographer who makes content on YouTube as well. Like the guy, he's another Fuji Nikon guy. He does, but he does use Canon and Sony as well. And for him, he, he, he took it from both sides. He talked about how cell phone camera has have lowered the barrier to entry into photography and how social media has made sharing your work instant and and your fan and bringing your work to your fan base instant instead of waiting for a photo book or something along those lines to come out those are both great perspectives but they don't tell the whole story and so i want to expand on that instagram is an extension of this channel and vice versa but they're all really more of a reason to use my wonderful cameras that are the source of my happiness when it comes to photography all of these platforms play a part in my needs. But the heart of my happiness and why I started doing photography in the first place is for the art of doing photography and for me. And I don't need social media or YouTube or anything to do photography for me. So in that respect, I completely agree with Peter McKinnon. But also, I enjoy having the platforms and I will use them to my advantage as best I can and yeah, I might not be at the top of everyone's algorithm, but that's okay. I wish, I wish I could be, or I wish it was more like YouTube where they shared smaller people's work, but they just don't do that on Instagram. They are more pointed towards ad sales, selling you things so they can make money. And they don't make money off of people like us. They make money off of the influencers that are doing their targeted marketing ads with their promotions on their things that they're selling. Furthermore, social media doesn't care about you. They care about the influencers that use their social status to market paid promotions and sell things. They care about putting their ads in between people like Kim Kardashian or ESPN or NBA so that they know you're gonna look at those feeds and they know you're gonna stop so they put their ads right there. Just look at this. To test, I just opened up Instagram. The first item was from ESPN who I do follow, but it's certainly not a close connection and it's not someone I would rather see at the top of my feed. The second was an ad for a new Motorola Razr. Cool, phone, good job Motorola, but I don't care. The third post was from the NBA. I don't follow them, but they still got to the third post in my feed. Then there was a political post, then there was another one, then there was another ad, two ads actually. Seven posts down, they finally showed me something that one of my friends posted that I actually follow. That's Instagram for you. Now, Facebook is very similar. 
there's more people that you actually follow on that feed, but there's a ton of ads mixed in with it. That's what they care about. They want you to go on the app so that you can look at the ads. They care about those ads and they will do whatever they can to bring you to their platform so you can see them. That's what they care about, that's it. So once I figured all that out, I started using social media as a tool to serve my needs and let the things I can't control just be that, things I can't control. I, like I said, I find YouTube more engaging. I'm able to talk to you guys in the comments. I'm able to talk about things. I'm able to bring up, get inspiration for new videos. And I find YouTube's algorithms to be much more helpful to folks like me trying to grow their channel. To test, I went to the home icon on my YouTube and look at this. I don't know Steven, but shout out to your channel, bro. YouTube does all does this all the time. It always shows me videos that have lower view accounts and promotes those so that we could see them. And I thank you, YouTube, for doing that because I'm sure my videos wouldn't get out there otherwise. So thank you. So what are your thoughts on social media? Where do you find the best place for you to get noticed is? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to subscribe. Give me the thumbs up button if you don't mind. I really appreciate it. It does help the channel. And um, yeah. That's it for this episode. I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I really enjoy putting these things together and uh, thanks for continuing to give me the inspiration to do so. All right, I'll see you next time. Peace. In the camera industry. And in... no, no, no. What's up everybody? Oh, has no and A, man. So let's get, let's expand on it. And now we're gonna have this really cool scripted thing that I'm gonna make that I hope doesn't look like shit. Fill that space here, fill that space here, yada, 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 bada, bada, bing. Okay, fade back to the studio. Yeah, we're here. Okay. That was finally thank God. My goodness, I could not be an actor. It's too many lines to remember, too much shit. Ugh, okay.